Oh my gosh. I think we're taking Katie's Disney card. Katie, Katie's off the podcast team. <laughs> Hey y'all, it's LJ here, owner and founder of Smart Moms Plan Disney and Smart Moms Travel. We are so glad you're here for another episode of the Smart Moms Plan Disney podcast. Now, here's your host, Allie. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Smart Moms Plan Disney podcast. In a special two-part episode, we will be concluding today. We are so, so glad you're here. Because once again, if you're listening to this episode, because it automatically loaded right onto your device that you're listening on, thank you. Thank you so much for being a subscriber to the podcast and listening so quickly after an episode is released. We appreciate it so much. We love watching those instant numbers roll in as people start listening right at even midnight. And so that's so great. We want to just tell you how much we appreciate y'all. And I know it seems like it might not matter, but it really, really does. If you would like to support this podcast and help us reach the ears of other Disney-loving listeners just like you, moms just like you, friends, sisters, daughters, whomever you are in the Disney planning process, fathers, please subscribe in your podcast platform. Just takes a second to follow, subscribe, let it drop in. And while you're there, if you have 10 more seconds, leave us a five-star review because that means so much to us. It helps us grow this podcast and to continue to help you. We love hearing feedback from our listeners. And recently, C. Kinnear wrote, I love this podcast. If you want to know all things Disney, this podcast is for you. I love the information provided is relevant and up to date. The podcast hosts are relatable and fun to listen to. I've learned so much. What a perfect review that is. It helps us feel so confident. You guys, I'm here back with Katie And with Becky, and you know, we've read a lot of reviews now here on the podcast because I like sharing the things that people find value in. And I feel like a lot of people say they feel like we're relatable. And I love that. I think that's what we're trying to be, right? We're trying to be just moms, just moms showing other moms that they can take their kids to Disney. Get yourself to Disney. And if your kids are grown, go with your significant other. Go by yourself. Disney does not have to be a one-size-fit-all. And I also really, really loved that particular review because it shows so much how important it is for moms to support other moms. This momming gig is rough some days, guys, <laughs> and it's so helpful when we can support each other. So, yeah, absolutely love reading those reviews, love all the feedback we get from our community. I love that too. You were saying like momming is hard and I'm like, oh my gosh, I just feel that to my bones every day. I don't feel like any part of motherhood gets easier. Like you're in the baby phase and then you're in the toddler and the little kid phase and then you're in the school kid phase and teens and so on and so forth. And just every phase presents different challenges, right? Because we say we're relatable. I think it's important we say when we're recording the podcast, you know, we're like, oh my gosh, my daughter's laying down for her nap. Like Katie said that to us this morning, you know? I was like, by the way, if we have to pause the recording because um, my youngest is screaming or something, I'm sorry. That's just kind of the phase of life that I'm in, right? I also think we we all speak very authentically and from our hearts. And I know like I strive to like live very transparently and everything. I'm probably going to share with you some embarrassing moments on this episode. Let me ask you this. You all know that I'm in that little kid phase of motherhood and my youngest is still in swim diapers, right? We haven't figured out potty training yet. I think that she's probably pretty close, but we're in that, you know, you got to pack the swim diapers to go to the pool phase. (laughs) Can I ask you a really embarrassing question? Have any of your kiddos ever pooped in a pool? (laughs) Mine, mine haven't, but... I had a friend whose daughter did. <laughs> I think that that is like every mom's nightmare. They don't want their kid to be the kid that makes everybody get out of the pool. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh gosh. My. Okay. So this is my embarrassing story to kick us off. <laughs> we were at one of the Disney pools and I noticed that Tally had a mess and I was like, oh my gosh, like this is my worst nightmare. And so I hurry up, I get her out of the pool. We take her to the bathroom. (laughs) She's just 
coded basically, right? Like that, that disperses. <laughs> and so I'm trying to like peel it off her body. They have like showers in the bathroom there by the pool. Thank God. <laughs> and like, as I'm doing this, I'm like, how, how do I even manage? Like, I don't have a backup swimsuit. I like, what, what, what do I do here? How do I wash these clothes? <laughs> for as mortified and horrible as it was for me, the real thing that I took away from it was there were other moms that were coming into the bathroom and they were like, can I help you? Do you need anything? And I was like, I don't think I didn't need anything, but thank you so much. It was, it was a moment where I felt so much camaraderie with other Disney moms because I was like, I can't believe that this just freaking happened. But so many other people were really understanding about it. <laughs> like this other mom in the bathroom was like, do you need help with her swimsuit, swimsuit or something? I was like, I honestly have no idea what I'm going to do with it. She's like, right at this point, you just feel like you should throw it away. Yeah. I'm like, that's exactly where I'm at. <laughs> did, you do, did you throw it away? Because I think I yeah, I totally threw it away. <laughs> My gosh. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I think that you, it's easy to throw away a, a swimsuit at Disney because you know that there is a gift shop right there that you can go buy anything that you need. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No problem. Throw that suit away and then go spend 80 bucks on the gift shop swimsuit. <laughs> <laughs> Money is not the same at Disney. When you're there, it's just like it's yeah. a yeah, just it's double. <laughs> yeah. That actually reminds me about when we went on our trip. We went on a trip together in the fall. And we didn't have any kids with us. So we were planning a lot of pool time. And our very first day together was a full poolside day. And we started to approach the resort. And I realized I forgot my bathing suit of all things. So I, just as Becky was just mentioning, needed to get a suit, although I wasn't going to buy the one at the resort gift shop. So I had my, I had Carla drop me off at Disney Springs and I went, I was like, where am I going to go? And so I, I went to like the Ron John there and I I don't like shopping for suits. I mean, do you like shopping for bathing? I don't like trying suits on. I'm very particular about the way they fit. I don't personally like the cheeky cut. That's just, but right now that's what, you know, cheeky cut is it. But like the cheeky cut is just like, it's so tiny. It's not for me. And it's all that there was there. And so I was in this, you know, crisis. And then I was like, I guess I'll just buy this suit. It's, you know, whatever. It's the closest one to what I would buy. And it, it was like a hundred and forty dollars. Oh my like, god! Oh my gosh! Because because I forgot my suit. You would have been better off going to the resort gift shop. <laughs> Probably. When yeah. we went to uh, Disneyland Paris, actually, we had zero anticipation of swimming on that trip because we were there to go to Paris. We actually did London and Paris, and we were trying to do a carry on bag only for all five of us. Whoa! And so. We were like backpack packing kind of thing with this. And Laker was probably six at the time. Well, we decided on one of our Disney days, uh, it was raining and the pool or the resort we were at at Disneyland Paris had a pool that had like a water slide and it was super, super fun. So we decided we bought vending machine, <laughs> vending machine swimsuits. You can oh, buy wow. a swimsuit out of the vending machine at the swimming pool when we were at Disneyland Paris. And I'm like, what is this? And it's just like this cheapest plain black swimsuit. <laughs> was it $150? No, they were like eight euros or something. They were super, oh, super wow. cheap. And we just bought one for all, all of our family. And of course, the one we that came out for Sean was a Speedo. So that was fabulous. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm dying. We need, we need the oh pictures. God. That will be so funny. <laughs> you have it? Oh my gosh, probably somewhere. Oh my gosh, that's just such such great memories. Thank you for bringing that up. I needed that today. Today's a hard momming day for me too. Aww. I have to say to Allie, you were talking about finding a swimsuit that fits your desires for your body type and everything. And you were both talking about it a little bit on part one of this episode. And I love that we really had a conversation that was very like body positive and things like that. I'm a, I'm a full figured woman. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm definitely on the busty side and everything. And, you know, I got a belly. I'm a mom of three. I'm not afraid to say that. <laughs> I'm a plus size mom. My, my thing is like, I'm okay showing my belly. I don't really care that other people know that I have a belly. <laughs> yeah, I, love I usually get like those bottoms that are like high waisted bottoms. But then my trick for my like swim top is to get one of those 
sports bras that ha that's the same material as like you find for the swimsuits like that stretchy material I'll find a good sports bra because I feel like I have more support and coverage with it and I feel way more comfortable going to the pool in one of those and just finding matching swim bottoms no one has ever noticed that that's what I do <laughs> and I've been swimming that way for years that's so funny because I I try to get rid of the support right like you know how your bikini top will come with those silly pads that oh, they come the out pads. And then you're supposed to like thread the needle with the boob pad, getting it back in your suit. And it's always twisted and it never fits quite right. I just yes. take this out right when I get my suit. Like those are the first thing that go. I, I rip them out of the top and we're, we're all good here. We don't use those. <laughs> like swimsuits that have an underwire or bras that have underwire in general. Like yeah, what, are we, what are we doing with these things stabbing us? Like what, why? Yeah. I quit the underwire game years ago. I can't do yeah. <laughs> The thinnest piece of fabric is what I go with for Susie. <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you that may not realize, we're grading Disney World Resort pools. And this is part two of a two-part episode because there are so many pools at Disney World, which is why we are talking so much about our bathing suits, swimwear, and, and pool experiences. But we got about halfway through the list on the last episode. And we'll kind of recap the grades in our grading system before we dive into the second half. But I wanted to mention, it, first of all, if you haven't listened to part one, you need to pause, listen to part one, and probably listen in order so that you're up to date and you don't have any spoilers on the grades that the first half got. But I realized when we stopped the call that I really, I gave Boardwalk some bad reviews, the Boardwalk pool, because I told the story about my my rough experience when I was so exhausted when I had babies that could not swim. Like babies that were too small for life vests. And then when we got off the call, I remembered that we stayed there again when my kids were older. And I wanted to give a quick shout out. We're not changing the grade or anything. And I still hold by what I said. But I didn't want to scare people away from the boardwalk pool because we stayed there again a couple of years ago. And my kids were probably, my youngest ones were probably five. And so they were well, you know, they could pretty much swim. But if they were out in the deep area, they could just put, throw on a life vest and float out there. You know, they were totally fine. They loved the slide. And we also had friends that stayed there with us and their daughter is 18 months younger than my kiddos. And so she was probably three and a half at the time. And she was able to wear a life vest and float as well. And we had a great, great, great pool day there. So a lot of the conversation that I was talking about in regards to that pool was because of its lack of like the zero entry that we talk about and it was just hard with like a, an actual baby. But if you have kids that are even like a little older than baby and able to float in a life vest, like I do feel like it's a great pool. And I kind of felt guilty that I gave it a worse grade or review than it deserved based off of like the baby convenience. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Boardwalk is high on my list to to go back to because I mentioned in the last episode, I really like the pool bar and everything there. I, if I'm being honest with you, I think I like that one better than Storm Along, personally. That might be the hot oh, take. Oh my gosh. I think we're taking Katie's Disney card. Katie, yeah. Katie's off the podcast team. Yeah, you're <laughs> out. Listen, the minute you embarrass yourself in a Disney pool and you just walk into eight foot deep water, you don't want to go back. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, I just felt like, you know, I wanted to clear that up because I have had really great pool time there and I felt like I... I maybe led on that it was only negative and that's just not the case. With the grade we got, which I don't know if we're referring back to it, but I feel like it ended up with a decent grade, even though there was a little bit of a negative twist on the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about our grading system that we're going to have here today for the second half of the resort pool report card. We are giving them approval ratings and then grading them from there. So if a pool is toddler approved, a place that your toddler and you are going to have a great time, then we are calling that Jack-Jack approved. If it is super calm and relaxing and serene, we are calling that Sleeping Beauty approved. Maybe it's the place you want to take a nap by the pool. If it has a zero entry, which means a sloped entry, basically where the water starts level with the ground and slopes on down without a ledge. And if you didn't listen to episode one yet, you're going to go back and hear a very funny take on why we called this 
the aerial approval because spoiler alert i thought it was because she couldn't walk becky thought it was because the magical moment when she walks out of the ocean in her beautiful gown and one rep one one visual is hysterical and one is is really pretty so i'll let you think whatever you want when it comes to the aerial approved uh zero entry mark there we also have elbow room how big and spacious is the pool we're calling that ursula approved and the special touch Tinkerbell approved for pools that go the extra, extra little bit of the way there. So if you get a mark in all of the areas, then you get an A plus four out of five of the areas, you get an A three is a B two is a C and one would be a D, but I mean, are we going to find a D rated pool? I don't know. That, I really don't think we are. There's one coming up that I'm, I'm really curious to see where we end up at. Yeah. Oh, you know, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> There's some really good ones coming up. So really fast to recap. So far on our report card, the all-star movies Fantasia pool got a B. All-star music Calypso pool got a C. All-star sports surfboard Bay pool was a C minus. You'll have to listen to the first episode if you want to know how we got the little minus tick in there. The Animal Kingdom Lodge pools, they have two main pools over there. They were an A+. Art of Animation, uh, the Big Blue Pool, A+. Beach and Yacht Club, Storm Along Bay, A+. Boardwalk Inn and Villas, the Luna Park Pool was a B. Caribbean Beach Resort, Fuentes de Morro Pool was a A+. The Contemporary, the Feature Pool, B-. And Coronado Springs Lost City of Cibola Pool was an A. I feel really good about those grades now revisiting it, having talked about it. I really feel like we nailed it. Those are, I feel good about those. Yeah. If I was looking at uh, going to a park specifically, or not a park, sorry, a resort specifically wanting to be there for a pool day, I think those particular ones that we scored A pluses, every one of us is a great option. Yeah, mm -hmm. I completely, yeah, I, I stand by it. I'm excited. Okay, so we have the back half here of the Disney resorts. We're going to grade them and have a full report card to share with our listeners. And if the pool is important to you, it's going to help you determine where your family should stay after this quick break. Are you a dedicated fan of the Smart Moms Plan Disney podcast and feel the need to take notes while listening to each and every episode? Our Diamond Mind Patreon subscription is a perfect fit for you. Every month, our Diamond Mind subscribers receive a new Disney travel guide that simplifies and organizes the podcast content. Join our community at patreon.com and search for Smart Moms Plan Disney podcast. Joining our Patreon supports our woman-owned small businesses okay, we're and allows you more simplicity jump in, and support in planning with your next our resort Disney pool vacation. discussions and Join us at patreon.com we and we'll see you the there. Fort Wilderness Campground Meadow Recreation Area. Which one of you have camped? I have not camped, but I've done the cabins three different times. And I really do enjoy Fort Wilderness Campgrounds. This area is really like I'm just not a camper like let me glamp I do not want to camp do not yeah. make put me like people will be intense do you know that people will stay intense on Disney property yes and people that don't realize this pool the Fort Wilderness pool it does service the whole campground and the campground if that was confusing what we just said does include both camping like with a tent or a camper or a pop-up as well as the cabins it's a massive campground like you would see at any other campground with both of those things. And then they have their big meadow recreation pool. Pretty awesome pool in terms of the size of the pool. My kids really enjoyed it. They thought that the water, it's like a water tower slide. And they thought that that was a really fun slide. But also the little toddler area that's in that pool is really, really fun. I don't, I would not like equate it to what I really, really love about the Caribbean beach toddler area. I think that's phenomenal, but they do have a really pretty solid toddler area in that pool for the for like the disney historians who you know you, you're really into those facts and everything i'm pretty sure that water tower that's at fort wilderness pool is like an original feature from river country was it called river country the old water 
park. Yeah, I, I think you're right on that. And River Country is a place I went all the time growing up. It's an abandoned water park now. Like, I think a lot of it is still exists, but it's just overgrown and one of those creepy things now. Yeah. But that was a really fun water park that Disney used to have. They used to have three. And yeah, I believe you're right that that tower came from that park, which is very cool. You know, for wilderness, like I'm, I'm with Becky in that I'm not a, I'm not an outdoorsy, uh, I'll go glamping as well kind of person. But Fort Wilderness really had like its heyday with, you know, river country and they used to have a train that would go back and forth. Like it, it was pretty cool. I'm not saying it's not cool now. Like I feel like the cool thing about Fort Wilderness is how people get so into the holidays, right? With like trick or treating and Christmas with the Christmas lights and everything. But what about the pool? Do you think it's a good pool? The pool for me is kind of, it leaves something to be desired. <laughs> Getting to the pool is also hard. Like it's not like you can't necessarily drive to the pool because the parking lot that is in that area is for golf carts, which is how people get around that resort. I think it's a very different take on anything that Disney offers in any other resorts. However, I also think that anybody that's staying at Fort Wilderness, especially at the cramp, the the cramp grounds, (laughs) at the (laughs) campgrounds, at the campgrounds are probably different families than who's staying at caribbean beach yeah the campgrounds do make you feel like you're kind of having two vacations in one but even this Mm -hmm. pool is called the meadow recreation area it kind of does feel like a rec center pool no it kind of does big concrete pads and like not over the top theming not super in your face disney world like the water tower thing is cool like if you know the story but you're not feeling that disney immersion at all but if you're staying at the campgrounds that might be something you don't want anyway it's true yeah i think that's true too like I like how you said it feels like two vacations in one, because if camping is like your thing, then that's exactly what you're getting there, right? Yeah, and it feels like a campground pool, which can we really knock the campground pool for feeling like a campground pool? <laughs> if if the rest of the if the rest of Disney World feels really like busy and like a lot going on, the campgrounds are that escape to the quiet, right? Yeah. Is there such a thing as a campground pool somewhere? Like, do campgrounds actually have pools? They do in Ohio. Oh, like in Utah, your campground pool was the lake. Like, go get in the lake. <laughs> we have in Ohio, our campgrounds, well, probably not, I don't want to speak on behalf of all of Ohio, but uh, several of the campgrounds I go to have both. So we'll have like water slides into the lake and like big lake trampolines and things like that. But then you'll also have like the campground pool. And this one does feel like the campground pool. Okay. Yeah. I guess you're getting educated on camping because that is so not my, my thing. And in Florida, if you go to a campground, you better be in a pool because if you get in a lake, yikes. I am not getting in a lake in Florida. (laughs) Listeners need to know that alligators are my biggest fear. People, the other podcast co-hosts like literally torment and taunt me with alligator photos. (laughs) <laughs> I, yeah, it's, I'm very scared of them. And that's why they're saying they would not get in a lake. So is this pool Jack Jack toddler approved? I would say yes. I think the little toddler area is a cute little area. In fact, I might even say that the toddler area is the strongest thing coming for this pool. Yeah. What kind of stuff does it have? It's just a little slide and the little like sprayer things off of it it's very i don't know there's nothing super disney about it but it's definitely something like a miniature splash pad with baby slides yeah kids will like it sleeping beauty approved definitely this is a very just like low-key experience in all i think respects this pool doesn't have zero entry and i value that a lot that's important to me when a pool at disney world where a lot of kids are doesn't have that i feel like it's a big miss yeah, I agree on that. Yep. Where does the where do you think that the Fort Wilderness pool falls in terms of size in comparison to other pools? Because do you feel like it's super big? I do feel like it's a pretty good size, but that could just be because no one was there. Like when we were there, we've been there twice to the pools twice. And both times the kids were sharing the slide round and round and round with one other family of kids. Yeah. And so it just never felt overcrowded. And so the size didn't even feel like it mattered. Yeah. Maybe on the 4th of July or on a busy summer. I don't know. Does it ever get busy? Probably. Probably around the holidays, like Katie was saying. I think people really gravitate there. But I think it's roomy enough to service it. But I don't think it deserves any sort of Tinkerbell points for Tinkerbell Mm -hmm. Group. I just, they did a good job. They hit the mark for a campground, but it's not like a super special campground, in my opinion. So y'all think it gets any Tinkerbell points? No, there's no. (laughs) If we're talking about other things that the resort's offering... 
sure. But the pool, not so much. Yeah. Okay. Well, it gets three strong marks for being Jack Jack approved, Sleeping Beauty approved, and Ursula approved for its calmness, toddler friendliness, and roominess, but not zero entry, nothing super special. And that's going to give it a B. I think that's fair. Yeah. I feel good about that. Yeah. So that's going to move us then into the Grand Floridian Resort and Villas Beach Pool. The Grand Floridian is well known to be one of the fancier resorts on property. And the pool is fine. It is fun. There are things that we're going to discuss that I think are great. And I don't mean to poo-poo it. But for as iconic as the resort is, I think the pool is a little bit of a letdown. What makes you feel like it's a letdown? Are you thinking like the theming makes you feel like it's a letdown? So this is the Grand Floridian. Mm -hmm. There's not really much about the pool that feels very grand. And I do think, so we'll just go ahead and say, it is toddler friendly because the splash pad there is really cool. And I actually think that the size of the pool makes it more toddler friendly because we'll talk a little bit about the size, but it's not super large. And I think, you know, sometimes when you're a mom of a little one, that is convenient. And the splash pad there is actually beautiful. It's like Mad Hatter tea party themed and it has the crooked cups and the hats. And I actually think it's one of the most aesthetically cute, you know, to look at splash pads. But it's not the biggest, not the grandest. It doesn't have the most bells and whistles. You know, there are two, three on the list today that we're going to talk about that I think are better. And when you're the Grand Floridian and you're being outdone by a minimum of three big splash pads, you know, that kind of feels silly. You know, I just think it's, it doesn't hold up to the resort. You want, when you're staying at the Grand Floridian, I feel like you really do want the best of the best in everything. And I don't think you're getting that here, which is where I struggle. Like, it's not a bad pool at all. Like, not even a little bit. It's gorgeous. It is calm. So let's just go Mm -hmm. through here. Like, Jack Jack approved, yes, because you're going to have that fun splash pad. It's not going to be so big that it's hard to keep track of your kiddo. I I think those are great. And for that reason, I do think it's Jack Jack approved. Although it's not an over-the-top, fun, vibrant, colorful area. But I think if you're, again, I think if you're staying at the Grand Florida and you don't want that, I mean, wouldn't you agree? I think, yeah. And I think that the fact that you're talking about this Alice in Wonderland, Mad Hatter themed toddler area, mm-hmm. when I'm thinking of pools at the Grand Floridian, you guys know I've only, there's only two resorts I haven't stayed at at Disney, Grand Floridian being one of them, but I've mm-hmm. walked that, those grounds a ton. And the only pool feature that stands out to me at all is that Mad Hatter toddler area. Yeah. And I, I give Disney some, some points here because they know how to build a pool to suit a clientele, right? You stay at the Grand Floridian for a specific reason. You have things that you're expecting that you want and that you don't want. And they found a way to incorporate Disney theming to a pool that isn't so in your face and over the top and obnoxious, right? That, that you may feel that way but you're still getting the touch of Disney. I And so I'm not saying I think it would be better if it were more over the top. I don't think that. There had to be another way to make it feel a little bit more grand to match the fact that it is the grand. Mm-hmm. I, I'm going to agree with what you say. And I was just thinking about like how you were talking about the Grand Floridian and how it has like all of these amenities and things that make it unique, that make it the grand, right? This is home to Victoria and Alberts, which is the only place on Disney property where there's an age limit on who can dine there. This is also home to Census Spa, which is a very like upscale place where adults are going to hang out. And if any Disney resort were going to have an adults only pool, I would kind of expect that Grand Floridian would probably be it, but they don't have that either. Yeah. Those are, that's, that's exactly it. Those are the points, right? Sleeping Beauty approved. Yes. It's, very calm and serene, still fun. I I certainly don't want to make anybody think their kid wouldn't have fun here, but it is going to be nice and relaxing. It's going to match the vibe of the resort in that way. Aerial approved, zero entry, absolutely a big one. Nice Mm -hmm. big zero entry area, which is great. Love that. Ursula approved. It's pretty small. I think it's fairly on the small side. And I think probably in terms of all Disney resorts, it's probably among the small side. And then 
you know, for Tinkerbell, I don't know that it has any, I mean, obviously it's going to have a slide. It's a deluxe resort. So it does have a slide, but is the slide like a standout, like some of the other ones we've talked about and we're going to talk about? No. Whenever I'm thinking about Tinkerbell approved, we're talking about like that extra, does it, does it give you that magic? Right. Yeah. And I have to say back to that, you know, Alice in Wonderland splash pad. Every time we're walking by that, because we'll like resort hop, hop often, my girls are dying to go play on that splash pad. And I feel like it needs to like get some effort for having a splash pad that has IP that is relevant, that kids actually really like, recognize and everything. And I feel like that's hard to do at a deluxe resort as compared to like a value resort where you kind of expect that over the top theming. So I do think that it has some pixie dust points there, right, for the IP of the splash pad. That being said, since they renovated the Grand Floridian to be like Mary Poppins themed, I would love if they added a second splash pad that was like the scene, at like the the penguins and, and the restaurant. That would be so cool. Yeah, you can do so much with Mary Poppins, like a carousel, something. and Yeah. yeah. And I, I just think there's much to be desired. I love your point about like a relevant themed splash pad because you're not really seeing that anywhere else. You know, they're all themed to the resort instead of to Disney. And I really love that. But I also tend to think if you did go play, if your girls finally get to go play on that splash pad, like, is it going to entertain them for hours? Listen, my kids will play at any pool for hours. So yes. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> so what do you think? Is it pixie dust? I think Becky's the deciding factor here. <sighs> Every time I walk by that beautiful splash pad, I think that is a beautiful splash pad. And then my second thought is, that is a small splash pad. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> the pool is small, the splash pad's small. Yeah. And I think I'm on the nothing special other than the theming, which is not part of, I mean, I guess the, haha, I could have been convinced either way, but I'm going to go today with no extra Tinkerbell dust. Sorry, yeah, guys. Right. I think that's fair because it's going to give the Grand Floridian uh, Resort and Villas Beach Pool a B, which I do think is actually fair when you stack it up to some of its competitors here. Yeah. Okay, Old Key West Pool. So I love that the Old Key West, just to give some like relevant facts here, Old Key West was the original DVC resort, right? And so what I love about it is because like the rooms are larger than most other rooms on Disney property and everything. And the pool itself, it's a large pool. And then it has this big giant sandcastle with like a Mickey on it. Like I do feel that it is imaginative and everything. And it fits the theming of the resort really well. What do you all think? Visually, I love the old Key West pool. I think that the sandcastle is beautiful. I don't know that there's much more I would ask for. I mean, we moved to South Florida for a reason. So Old Key West is going to be a vibe I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. uh, I love the boats pulling up next to the to that area to take you to the different resorts or to Disney Springs. Like, I love the vibe of this pool so, so much. I love this pool. This is a great pool. Old Key West is one of the resorts we've had the most fun at on our pool days. It is Jack Jack approved for sure. This is a very fun pool to be at. There is a sand playground directly behind the pool, which mm -hmm. is so much fun. Like my kids were just running back and forth to both. What one of you were just saying, the the slide is this massive sand castle. It is so fun to look at. Like that's the kind of stuff you really expect at Disney World. Mm -hmm. A bigger than larger than life Disney sand castle and yes the slide spits out in a mickey head and we stayed at old key west with a huge friend group okay so we had like three families and seven kids like there were so many of us staying at old key west together we did two pool days when i tell you the old key west slide is the fastest slide on disney property i am not exaggerating <laughs> we were scream laughing and crying when we were shooting out of the slide so fast. Like my friend literally shot out of the bottom of the slide. And I swear he like skidded across the top of the pool because he was going so fast, like before he went in, like it was literally so fast and we were dying laughing. And the lifeguard said like, yeah, people say our pool slide is the fastest on property or whatever. Like it is so much fun. It's really big. The entrance to it, you kind of like wind up through the sandcastle, which is very fun. 
for somebody that likes that element of the pool, which we've talked a lot about how I do, that is so great. I think also having a fun slide that kids are going to have a blast on having the playground right there, but also walking to into that area and just feeling chill. Like it just has a chill vibe. So that sleeping beauty is a natural yes at this resort. Yep, exactly. This is another one though, that isn't zero entry. So when I stayed there, my kids were bigger and they were able to float in life vests and go down the slide. And I was able to sit like, on, like I sat with my friends on the edge and we had so much fun, um, but it was missing that zero entry. So it doesn't get aerial approval, uh, which is a bummer because I think that's really for me, all this pool is missing. It doesn't have a splash pad. It does not. I was going to say, we have to have a conversation here about the splash pad factor, right? How are you going to have this big, giant, imaginative pool that's a sandcastle and not have some some sort of beachy themed like splash pad to go with it? I do feel like it's missing that element. And I hate that you look up, you know, pictures or anything of Old Key West if you go and you search splash pad or kiddie pool at Old Key West, it usually shows you a picture of the dolphin fountain. And I'm like, that is not a splash pad. <laughs> There's no one playing in that water. <laughs> yeah, that's like over Florida water. Don't be mistaken and think that those dolphins are a splash pad. They are not. But yeah. I don't think it needs it because it has the little park. Like my kids, when they want to break from the water, they go to the little park. You're not, you don't leave the pool area. It's right there, which... We talked on the last episode about how Coronado has that, and it's so nice. This is one of the only other resorts that has that, and my kids really used it because sometimes you want a water break, you know, and and so you have the play feature, you get the break from the water, and then you come back and you have the water. Here's a trick question for you, and maybe you know this, maybe you don't. Actually, Disney's old Key West pool has a feature that it's the only pool on property that has it. Do you know what it is? I don't. I don't know. This is the only pool on Disney property that has a sauna. Mm. It's inside the lighthouse and it's for adults, but I think that's really cool. I mean, a lot of people really like a sauna. Yeah, absolutely. I did not. Yeah. And so it's what's in the little lighthouse there at that pool. I just think this pool really hits and it's, this is a really underrated resort. And that's kind of what I was saying about the Grand Floridian is it's like, here you have this huge expectation resort with like yeah. an underwhelming pool. And then you go over to Old Key West and you kind of have an underrated resort with an overwhelmingly positive pool. Yeah, I have to agree with that. I agree. Yeah. So that's going to give it points in four areas for an overall A. I need to go back to Old Key West again. I've stayed there twice and I want to go do the sauna. I didn't know it was there. How did yeah, I, I think that? a lot of people, I think a lot of people don't know that. And yeah, that that's what's in the lighthouse. All right. So at the Poly, the Polynesian Village Resort, which you all know is Allie's probably favorite resort. You have the lava pool. There are several pools at the Polynesian as well. But I think everyone usually thinks about that lava pool with the cool slide. And the splash pad area there is like right right there by the main pool as well. And it has like those tiki spitters and things like that. The lava pool has a lot to offer, right? It's the greatest. <laughs> it, is, like, it is so fun. I don't even know that it's like, actually the best pool is probably one we already talked about, but it, this has to be up there equal or, I, I mean, first of all, the way you get to the Polynesian pool, like if you're staying on property, you're walking from your, you know, whichever building you're staying in. But if you're walking out to the pool from the main lobby of the Polynesian, you are just greeted with Disney World. Like you come out of the doors and it's the castle yeah. and beautiful lake. I, I mean, it's Disney World. This is what you want. You have a perfectly framed view of Magic Kingdom Park. And the pool situated right in front of it from your vantage point with that splash pad, Katie, you were talking about. And then the pool itself, which has pretty much every feature. I do have a couple of things I take issue with, but I don't know that it would like lower my rating. I think that the Polynesian pool, everything you're saying about it is just that perfection, that view. The fact that you can see Disney World across the lake from the view. Is there anything more Tinkerbell than that? No. Yeah, it has to get Tinkerbell points for the castle. <laughs> yeah, you that alone, the fact that it's situated so perfectly 
with that skyline is Tinkerbell. I mean, and the splash pad it has to be one of the biggest on property. It's massive. You climb up in that thing. There are buckets and slides and sprayers. And I, I mean, it's amazing. It's really it, cool. it, it is one of the things I take a little bit of issue with. Um, it's separate from the actual pool area, which I think most, like a lot of resorts do that. It's not specific to the Polynesian where you do have to like go to a different gated area to go there. That's actually probably a positive thing because then for your little ones, they're gated in separately, you know, so it, it actually is overall probably a safer thing. Sometimes, you know, if we're enjoying our seats, it's a little inconvenient because we're up and down and back and forth. But I guess I'm talking myself into why it's actually a positive thing that it's like that. But it is absolutely one of the best splash pads on property. If that's important to you, it's a huge feature. Very nice. Something I would point out though, because this is the second, I've only st not stayed at two resorts. This is the other one. So I've never been there as a guest, only just walking the grounds. And that area can get kind of busy because so many people want to go experience the poly. Do they still maintain that sleeping beauty feeling of you could take a nap by the pool? Yeah, I'm actually so glad you said that because it does feel like you're in a different world almost. Like once you're behind the pool gate, you're not feeling that foot traffic of the the green, you know, there's like a, a green play area at the Polynesian right by the quick service restaurant and the Dole Whip station. Like you don't really feel that. And then to your backside is the Poly Beach. So you can go out there by the bungalows and there's swings and hammocks and chairs and you can watch the fireworks at night from there. And you really don't feel that either. I really feel like you just feel secluded at the pool. It's perfect. And it's, it is, I think a pool that lives up to the expectation of the resort. Mm, that's awesome. I have those moments. Do you guys have moments that you like in your head, Mark, like top five moments as a mom? When I came to our Disney world or we came and did Disney world without tickets the day before we got on to our Disney cruise. Laker was three, McKenna was five, Macy was seven. We went to the Poly and just lived at the Poly without staying at the Poly. And we spent time around that pool. We weren't at the pool because you can't get in necessarily, right? You can't get in if you're not staying there. But we went to that beach you're talking about, Allie. And my kids played in the sand there. And we had, we. it was the first time we realized that you could get Dole Whip outside of Magic Kingdom. Because at the time, Magic Kingdom was like the sole holder <laughs> of Dole Whip. And it was the perfect day. It was like easily top three mom days. Like I'm making this happen for my kids and not just for my kids. I'm making this happen for me because while it's their childhood, it's my momhood. And I get to watch these and make these memories with these kids. And it's just like, that was a day well done. <laughs> yeah. You're like crying right now. <laughs> crying right now. <laughs> Maggie's actually teary. Something I love is that I have resorts I grew up at with my family and it wasn't the Polynesian, right? And I have these nostalgic memories of like my brother and my parents at these other Disney resorts, but the Poly is kind of like where my kids are growing up, you know? So I'm a little biased. I could, now I'm going to cry. I like see them in the, <laughs> I see them in the zero entry as babies. And now as like, you know, young kiddos and they're learning to swim and every year they have new skills and they can go a little bit further out. And I don't know. It just, this is the perfect pool to make memories at like the area by the zero entry where they play all the pool games. There's tons of chairs there. You can just camp out as a family for the day. Or if, you know, they want to venture out a little deeper, there's plenty of seating on the opposite side. You don't feel like it's so big that they get lost, but it's big enough to explore. It, and the volcano slide. Oh my gosh. Even my mom went down the volcano slide. We stayed on our multi-generation trip at the Polynesian, like with my brother's family and my parents. And we had this big family pool day and every single one of us went down the slide, including my mom who doesn't always get in the water. And it was just the best memory. Now my kids have a memory of literally their whole family sliding down the volcano slide. So as a DVC owner coming home, right? When you, when you pull on property, they say, welcome home. Is that like legit your home. Yeah. I think I told the story about when we were on our spring break trip and we were staying at the yacht and beach club, but we went to visit the Polynesian to have dinner. Actually, we met y'all there. And then we went for dinner another night. And I had this sense of like, other people were checking in and I was like, wait, no, this is my resort. This is where <laughs> I like to stay. And like, I wasn't staying there and I was really sad. And I understand that it can be it's, it's among the most expensive of the Disney resorts. It's one of those that if it means a lot to you, I would book it far, far out in advance, pay on it as long as you possibly can. And even just a night or two at, 
at the poly to enjoy this pool and those views and those experiences really special. Oh my gosh. I just realized, have you ever, I think that you could do it. Could you be in the pool and have happily ever after happening and like hear the music and we've done it. We've swam. Uh, yeah. Priceless. Perfection. Priceless. You can't argue with perfection. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't get any better. It's absolutely perfect. Ugh. All right. Well, that's an A plus for the poly lava pool, which is going to take us then to hippy dippy pop century. Becky. I started, I think I've talked endlessly about our roots of Disney are in the value resorts. We were always a, a value resort family. Honestly, I don't mind the, the value resorts. The only thing that has really pushed us out of them is that we're a family of five and there's not a lot of options for families of five at the value resorts. So when we upgraded to staying at the Pop Century from staying at the value, which is everything we had done pre previous to that, it felt like, oh my gosh, this pool looks amazing. It's surrounded by these bigger than life Disney characters everywhere. You're living in Disney magic in the Pop Century Resort. The Hippy Dippy Pool has these flower spouts that are shooting into it. There's a little toddler area, similar like you were saying, Allie, at the Poly, that it's kind of separate. It's not in the same general area. But that Hippy Dippy Pool being shaped kind of curvy and funky like the it would be being a hippy dippy pool, right? That vibe is really, really fun, but it is loud. It is a loud pool being with a lot of people coming through there, but our kids still wanted to get in. So still definitely a fun place for families to hang out. I don't want to mislead anybody to think that like we talked so highly about the lava pool just now. And I don't want to leave anybody with the impression that only the deluxe resorts have great, awesome pools. Like we don't feel that way at all. We gave Art mm -hmm. of Animation an A+. Plus because the pool experience is really great. We did mention on part one of our pools report card, and we didn't reiterate it here, that just as a generalization, the value resort pools do not have slides or hot tubs, right? And so automatically you're missing two elements that like for me are important, but for some families, they just don't care. They're just looking for a big open space for their kiddos to swim and splash and have a good time which the value resorts will absolutely supply. This is vibrant. I can't imagine a kiddo not liking swimming in the hippy dippy pool. Yeah, it was it was late when we were there. It was super busy, but the kids still had a great time. Those those cast members that are out entertaining them with the name that tune and all the water games, they do a really good job given how many people come through that pool daily. What I would say about this pool is a Kid, a young kiddo would probably say it's the, the best pool they've ever swam in because of the way it looks, mm -hmm. you know? Pop Century, all of the Disney resorts have multiple pools, but Pop Century has that main one, which is the Hippy Dippy Pool. They also have that bowling pin shaped one. And then the last one is like a computer area pool, right? It has a big old floppy disk and a big keyboard. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> so like the like... theming, the theming is larger than life. And I, I think that even adults can appreciate it just for like that throwback element of it. For my birthday recently, we were staying at Yacht Club, but on my birthday, we decided to do like a Skyliner crawl with the kids and, you know, hit the different playgrounds and just sort of explore the resorts. And I loved kind of being at Pop Century on my birthday to be able to see, you know, what happened, what was notable in 1990, like things like that. It, it's a cool resort, yeah? Yeah, and it's cool. I like, yeah, that I, I do so appreciate that these value pools follow the theming so intensely. It just does give it a bigger, better, immersive experience, which I think yeah. a lot of families heading to Disney want. Kids want that. Families want that. It's a lot of what you're looking for with Disney. So this pool has a lot to offer. It's definitely, definitely toddler approved. It gets Jack Jack approved points. Does it get Sleeping Beauty approval? No. 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 <laughs> I think that you could take a nap at some of those off pools, but the hippy dippy pool is not a place you're going to be taking a nap. If you head over to the computer pool, the laptop pool, whatever they call it, and then the bowling pool, both of those are going to be less crowded. But even that hippy dippy pool is going to have a lot going on. Yeah. It's not going to be Sleeping Beauty approved. Like you could try to rest, but it's just too chaotic. Too, too many kids and colors. Ariel approved huge miss here no zero entry at pop century doesn't really make a lot of sense 
Yeah. I think that the formation of the pool is probably why they don't have zero entry because it's like curvy like a flower kind of. Yeah, I don't know. Although cannonballing into a pool is not beyond any kid. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Ursula approved, yes, this is a really big pool, big open space. And uh, Tinkerbell? I think mm. the theming is pretty cool, but I don't know. Does it have that extra pixie dust? You know what this feels like to me is what I loved about the movie Turning Red is that fill of Lisa Frank stickers. <laughs> I feel like this is a pool that just has Lisa Frank Disney stickers posted all over it. <laughs> this is it, Disney. We're asking for a collaboration. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, I would love a Lisa Frank pool. That would be great. I would too. <laughs> that would be amazing. That needs to be in the 90s section. Yeah, we, we need century. an update to the 90s. <laughs> Can you imagine? Like a 90s school Teacher pool. It'd be like Trapper Keepers and Lisa Frank. Or it could have a caboodle. Yeah, like my kids, I bought my kids caboodles. <laughs> oh, yeah. it'd be perfect. Oh, so good. Wow. Okay. Well, if that existed, it probably would get an A plus, but it doesn't. <laughs> so it's missing some marks here. <laughs> Even though I think it's a great pool, it's only it's only getting Jack Jack approval and Ursula. Ursula approval. Not mm-hmm. getting our approval anywhere else, which is gonna give this a C. Ah, shucks. But I stand by it. Maybe we give it a C plus because we... <laughs> I like that. Let's give it a C plus because it is a fun pool. Like I, some of the points are unavoidable. Like we can't give it a point for a zero injury. Like the theming is fun, but the theming can't carry it the whole way to the finish line. Yeah. Okay. All right. C plus for pop century, just because we said so. <laughs> <laughs> and that'll move us to the Port Orleans French Quarter Pool. All right, I'm taking it. (laughs) I love Port Orleans, both French Quarter and Riverside. French Quarter has that, it's like a a dragon sort of like thing happening there. What, what, is it a serpent? It must be a serpent. (laughs) And that's like the main pool slide area. And then right beside it is that the splash pad. And we have said, I think on our, comparing the moderate resorts episode, I think we said that this splash pad was potentially the best splash pad on Disney property because it is, it's a large size splash pad. It has like everything you can want, really bright colors. It sort of leans into that like Mardi Gras color scheme and everything. It's really fun. So I love the pool at French Quarter. It definitely 100% gets Jack Jack approval. I agree. It gets that splash pad. I stand by. It's one of the best on property. It's right up there in the running with the poly splash pad that we were talking about, but maybe even more points because of its like vibrancy and fun factor. Like it just, if you look at pictures of this, like this is a fun splash pad. They even have like a actual slide that's not just like a little kid slide. It's a little bit longer slide, right? And so yeah, they do. Maybe extends the age of kids that would be interested in playing on that water feature. Yeah, yeah, my kids sure. loved it. We stayed, we stayed behind that fence for that splash pad for quite a bit of time. The hot tub here is outside of the pool area. Like you kind of got to walk down the path and then through a different gate, which is a little weird. Like I don't. I necessarily love it's like that cross from the playground it is kind of a weird spot it was a weird setup yeah it was almost like oh shoot this is a moderate resort it has to have a hot tub i guess we could put it here <laughs> yeah. that's what it feels like yeah it feels like we forgot about it and we had to find a place for it really fast but overall the pool is great it is a moderate moderate tier so the slide feels a little small to me which i don't think is fair because we talked about how big the slides are like at caribbean beach so i don't think moderate necessarily means has to be small but the dragon slide is a little bit like kind of womp womp in terms of like thrill but kids love it my kiddos love it but my kiddos are all still young yeah i think you'd have a hard time finding a kid that didn't love sliding down a dragon right but like for me and i'm looking for that excitement like we were talking about the old key west slide this one is just kind of down and it's over the the main pool there is that serpent and it's sort of segmented so it appears like it's filling the entire pool area and then there's a character riding the serpent is that actually king triton i don't know (laughs) i have no idea i don't think so i don't think because there's no other touches of the little mermaid at the pool there aren't but 
It really kind of feels like King Triton. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> in a lure kind of way, like the original <laughs> Little Mermaid book, but not the Disney <laughs> version of Yeah. Of King Triton. I don't know. Well, real King Triton is over swimming at Art of Animation, so he can't also be swimming at French Quarter. So it's fun. It's great. It has Mickey Beignets, Five Steps Beyond the Hot Tub, which are, you know, the best pool snack on Disney property. Do you feel like he gets Tinkerbell points for easy access to beignets? Yes, I do. <laughs> I do too. I do too. I actually do. Yeah. Who yeah, gets that? Are you kidding me? <laughs> this is our report card. We can do whatever we want. <laughs> yes. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We can do whatever we want. So the answer is yes. Walk us through the other approvals here. Okay. So we mentioned Jack Jack um, being definitely Sleeping Beauty. Mm, I don't know. That one's, it's it's kind of a busy pool. I'm going to say no, because it the whole point of this pool feels like party. And like, I don't know. Yeah. And I, I feel like that kind of contrasts the vibe of the resort as a whole, right? Because Port Orleans, both of them feel like laid back, relaxed. But the pool itself kind of has a more upbeat feel to it that I don't know that I would necessarily like relax or take a nap there. What about Ariel approved? There's no zero entry here. So yeah. Ariel's doing doing the the boot scoot. <laughs> <laughs> Actually flopping into the pool. <laughs> Can you imagine Ariel? She'd get up to the edge and she would just like bloop, flop in. She'd have nowhere to go. <laughs> Yeah, so it doesn't get points for aerial approval. What do you guys think, though, about Ursula points for being a large pool, the elbow room? room? Yeah, I actually think this has an interesting layout, and it's pretty spacious. Yeah, it's kind of segmented. Yeah. Like different it's, it's, sections, and so it kind of feels, it kind of feels small if you're in one of those little sections, but there's a lot of like roaming that can happen through that pool. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, I agree. I feel like if, if one area feels crowded, you just, you know, meander over to a different area. Yeah. So absolutely. I think that's fine too. So that means it gets approval in four out of five sections, giving us an A for the pool at French quarter. I really like that. When I walked up to that pool for the first time, those whimsical characters, the French Quarter, it just felt like New Orleans. It does. Just feel like that resort feels so good to hang out at. It does. It feels like New Orleans Square. Yeah. Yeah. It's a vibe for sure. So fun. So the cool thing about Port Orleans is that there are two Port Orleans resorts. And sometimes people get a little confused there, I think. So Port Orleans French Quarter is the New Orleans take on that specific area, the party central new orleans french quarter but just across the way a walk away there's a walking path you are going to transition to a different part of louisiana and new orleans itself and you're going to be at port orleans riverside which leans far more into the relaxing southern charm bayou and you really do feel that shift you go from french quarter to bayou and you really get a completely new world when you do that for somebody that's looking for a more relaxing Southern, ex you know, Southern vibe experience or just a more relaxing resort as a whole, I usually, when I'm talking to families and they want something like, my kiddos are going to love the parks, but they really need something that's going to be a slower vibe at night. I pitch and talk about Port Orleans Riverside so often for that factor and also the pool. I feel that way about the pool. But I don't want, in our conversation here, I want to talk about how it's a good balance because even though it's relaxing, I do find this to be a very fun pool. I have to say, my family's probably spent more time at Port Orleans Riverside than any other Disney resort because I have three little girls. So anytime we have the opportunity to stay in those royal guest princess rooms, we're doing it, right? Like they love those rooms and I'm going to be so sad whenever we like age up out of occupancy for them. <laughs> Because gosh, do we love them so much. But the whole resort is like so picturesque and definitely that relaxed laid back vibe. The pool, the pool is like, I feel like it leans harder into that going down to bayou feel. <laughs> you know, they have the sprayers that are coming down through the water chutes and stuff. And it looks sort of like it was cobbled together. And the slide is also that kind of feel too. But we love it because it gives you 
it hits all the marks, right? It's also, it's relaxing. It's fun. It hits everything we want. I think that this is a really cool pool. However, I have a, I had confusion when I saw this pool for the first time because we stayed here on a spring break trip where we hit six resorts in six nights. We jumped from one resort to the next. Oh, the next wow. Night. And one of the places we stayed also on this trip was Fort Wilderness Cabins. And while we were at Fort Wilderness Cabins, we went to that pool, which we've already talked about. And then the next night we jumped over and we're at Port Orleans and we saw this resort pool. And I was like, I feel like this would actually be a really good fit pool at Fort Wilderness Cab Campgrounds. True, <laughs> like yeah. The structure together of the shoots, like they could easily make that like with the gold mining theme that they do have over there. Yeah. The surface there, the the it's right next to the fishing hole. It felt a little confusing from the Fort Wilderness piece because I do think that this is what you can do with that kind of theming in that outdoorsy vibe. Yeah, that's why that pool, like I said, it felt more like a rec center. Whereas this one really hits the mark on theming. Yeah. So I said I had different resorts that I stayed at growing up with my family. And this was actually my, this was my main, like as a little girl resort, we did transition and do boardwalk and yacht club as I was an older kid, like all the time. But when I was really a lot younger, this is where we stayed. I've talked about it before back then. Actually, it was called a different thing. It was called Dixie Landings. And it's, it's still the exact same resort layout pool and everything. It's just now Port Orleans Riverside. And I've also mentioned on the show, my dad found like the perfect room and location to this pool mm -hmm. because he, he was all about location and view. And I actually stayed in the exact room with my family a couple of years ago. So we Aww. were, they got it and it was amazing because we always remembered like that room number. And so it, it was so funny when I was standing in front of that room, I was like, Oh my gosh, this actually is an amazing location. I was like, the main building is right there and the pool is literally right there. The The pool overall is great. There's like a little water feature you can swim under, which is, it's probably less exciting than I'm leading on, but I remember as a kid liking it, like liking swimming under that. The slide is pretty big. You know, this is where I was saying, I, I don't think it's fair that French Quarter slide feels so small just because it's quote unquote a moderate slide when you have things like this one feels a lot bigger. Um, a lot more fun. It doesn't have a splash pad. So you do lose that factor, mm -hmm. uh, which is a little bit of a bummer, but it hits the marks on staying consistent with the resort itself and what you would expect out of a pool from this resort. So definitely toddler approved, definitely sleeping beauty approved. Just this whole resort in general is relaxing. Mm -hmm. um, no zero entry. So no aerial approval. But a really large pool. So good on the, the elbow room for sure. But what about the Tinkerbell? What about the Pixie Dust? I think Katie's stayed there the most. Like, Katie, is there anything that stands out beyond that your kids adore it? But it's more the room that pulls you there, I think. And honestly, it's the room and the vibe. For me, taking a walk between Port Orleans French Quarter and Port Orleans Riverside feels so refreshing. You're there in the Florida heat, but it's so shady and breezy with all the beautiful trees and the boats going by and the architecture is just so pretty. I love the relaxing vibe as an adult at Port Orleans Riverside, and my kids love the immersion of those royal guest rooms. I I don't... If, I mean, I would hands down give Tinkerbell points for the royal guest rooms, <laughs> but am I giving points for the pool... Mm, probably not. They do have a playground that's really close by there that um, some of the playgrounds on, on Disney property are really generic. And this one has some elements to it that make it more themed to the resort. Like it has a um, big giant paddle wheel feature on the pool or on the playground there. The playground is really nearby the pool, but it's not like in the pool area. Like it's a different area. The pool's like completely gated off. Yeah. Um, I also really like the pool bar. I usually get some sort of fancy green slushy drink there. The pool bar's in a nice location in comparison to the pool, but I still don't think it's Tinkerbell. It doesn't get the Tinkerbell points. It gives, it gives this pool a B overall, which I feel really comfortable with. Yeah, I agree. I feel good about that. All right. So Becky, why don't you start us off about the Riviera? Okay. So we're going to talk about the Riviera, but I do need to manifest something for Katie. We need Disney to listen. These 
<laughs> princess rooms need to be upgraded to be families of five. Yes, please. Yes. Families of five want to Disney so much. So Disney, if you're listening, please manifest that for Katie and other families of five. All three of us sitting on this are families of five. I think that a lot of these rooms that they're remodeling, they're 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 looking, they're recognizing that that is a need. Okay. Riviera. The Riviera location, everything about Riviera is just so relaxing, but the pool is right in the middle of this hub, which is so much going on. So many awesome things going on, but still very tranquil. The pool itself has, it pulls on my heart a little bit because I'm a sorcerer Mickey person, which comes from Fantasia. So it has that little, is she a hippo? She's a hippo, right? Yeah, <laughs> and this, this little hippo area for your kids to play in. But the pool is definitely like a resort style pool. You're going to have some incredible chairs to sit on at this resort. It's overlooking the lake, beautiful lake that's going to partner right up next to the Caribbean Beach Resort. You're going to have Skyliners floating by you while you're at this pool. There's a lot to love about this pool. And I also, I know we're talking about the feature pool, the Riviera pool, which is the main one that has the slide, but right across the walkway is an adult, an adult pool where it's not necessarily only adults, but it's a much, much quieter pool. And I don't think that it's necessarily something we need to keep a separate conversation about, but I do want to recognize that if the water, the size that we're going to talk about with the Riviera pool, know that right across the walkway, there is a quieter pool happening right there. Yeah. I think you hit something I was going to touch on. You said it's a resort style pool. Style pool. Do you think that this pool is too much like fancy resort and not enough like Disney? It is very, it is very, very much. There's things about the Riviera that confuse me. And the shape of this pool as well is just kind of like feels like I'm in a in a resort, not Disney enough. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's unfortunate. It does kind of feel that way. I have to say though, I'm not that mom that's sitting like on the side and watching my kids in the pool. I'm the mom that's right there in the playground, right? Like in the splash pad. I I want to use the water cannon too, okay? I know I'm 34, but I do. And I really like that Fantasia splash pad. I have to say, like, I've been surprised by the, like, the giant water bucket that dumps and everything. I think it's cool, but it is, like, it's a smaller splash pad area. The pool itself is a little bit yeah, I don't know. Just leave something to be desired. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's exactly it. I'm glad that we're having this candid conversation because it is a beautiful pool, but I kind of feel like it's similar, yeah, to the Grand Floridian. It has that themed splash pad. That's fun. But then the pool, it like, I think Disney was trying to target who they, the families they thought were staying at the resort. Like, oh, you're wanting this more upscale experience, less in your face experience. And it took just a little bit of the fun. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I always recommend the Riviera as a great place to stay, like on an adult trip. Not that it's not great with kids. I can just think of like a lot of other deluxe resorts that I would stay in with my kids first. And if I was going with my kids, honestly, we would probably end up playing bocce out in the open field that before go to the pool here yeah so toddler approved you know every one of these pools is toddler approved right like how hard is it to be approved as a pool by a toddler <laughs> i don't know you did you did not give it that mark for boardwalk <laughs> well yeah well, that's because i had a bad personal experience there <laughs> I that was tough for me. That's why I had to have that little anecdote at the beginning because I still yeah. stay. Up. Is it toddler approved? I mean, my kids would still have a great time there, and like I said, I I would have a great time in this splash pad there. So I think it gets it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so with that little. It, but I think it gets it on the skin of its teeth. On the skin of its teeth, you are right. Like it barely is toddler approved. It's like it's toddler approved because there's water. <laughs> Okay, um, definitely Sleeping Beauty uh, approved. They have the most comfortable, Becky was mentioning them, the the lounge chairs at this pool are like the most luxurious on all of property. They have this like really, really beautiful half dome awning and they're very plush cushions. They're nice. And there's big couches. Like it's luxury for sure. It's really nice. Ariel approved. It does have the zero entry. Ursula approved. It's kind of on the small side. It is. And it's weird cut. Like, I don't, it's just awkward. It leaves me with question marks about the design choices, but not in a bad way. I think the Riviera Resort is amazing, but it's, it's just definitely not 
a huge resort style pool that you're going to be able to have a bunch of room in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the only reason I would give it Tinkerbell points would be like that Skyliner view overhead, I think is really unique and cool. All of the courtyard games that you're able to play. And I do kind of consider that lump that in pool area, you know, it's right there. A lot of people are wearing their bathing suits going out over there and playing like with the big chess stuff and all those games out there. But the pool itself kind of like. I might make an argument though, because right across the step, like literally right across the walkway is that other pool that is very uniquely adult. It's yeah. not said that it is a un an adult only pool, but basically only adults go there. So as close to having an adult only pool on Disney property as we can, that might be worthy of the Tinkerbell. So I just want to revisit that, that aerial approved factor with the zero entry. Is, is there zero entry in the main pool or is it just in that quieter offshoot pool? It's, I think it's actually only in the riviera pool the main pool with the slide okay yeah the you know why you're thinking that because the quiet pool has like i i feel like pretty narrow steps in so mm -hmm. you can kind of ease your way in but it's not a straight slope yeah and they're really cool um, steps though they're like almost the length of the whole yeah they're really side good. of the pool yeah like, people that like to play or people who like to sit on stairs in a pool there is a lot of stair space in that other quieter pool yeah, it's really nice. It is. It's a great pool to be at. It, our score here will give it an A, which I feel good about. It is a great pool. I We're kind of sounding like we're downing on it, but I think we explained why. Um, we only have two left, you guys. And then we have a complete report card of all of the Disney World Resort pools. Mm -hmm. And the next one is one that we're all very familiar with. We've done a couple pool days here together, I believe. And that's going to be the Saratoga Springs Resort and Villas Pool. Saratoga Springs is a massive resort, like so, so, so big. So they do have multiple pools and they also have, there's, this isn't the only pool on property with a theme. There's another like cute themed horse stall type pool, but we're specifically talking about the main attraction here over by the lobby building. And I like this pool. I think this pool is really fun. One thing that was really cool about this, Saratoga Springs is themed after like horse racing. And so every hour on the hour, I believe it is, you hear like, and actually maybe one of you can verify and fact check this for me. I stayed at Saratoga over Kentucky Derby weekend a few years ago. And every hour on the hour, they were playing the, that horse music, like when the horses go to their stalls. And I wasn't sure if it was because it was Derby weekend or if they always do that. We'll have to do some fact checking on that. Yeah, because I thought that was really fun, like a fun little cute touch. I wonder, because you feel that derby vibe at Saratoga Springs, no matter when you're there. It's going to be in your room. It's going to be in your uh, main lobby area. It's a really cool, very different, distinct vibe at that resort. This pool really does kind of have it all. Um, well, that's not true. I don't think it has a splash pad, but... Oh, wait, hold on. Does it have a splash pad? It does. It has the Donald Duck one. Yeah, that's right. It's splashing fountains, though. It's not like massive water features for yeah, slides. It's, it's on the back side of it, over kind of toward where the zero entry part is. Or the front side, I guess, depending on which entrance you go. My in. kids would still play there and think it was great. <laughs> yeah, it really does have it all. It has that little water feature area. It has two slides. Actually, the cast member that told us the Old Key West slide was the fastest said that this one rivals it. That... This that this one and that one for whatever reason are super fast. The main slide is kind of up through some winding rocks. I don't think it's that big, but it still is really fun. And then they have the toddler slide kind of in front of it in the middle of the pool, kind of similar to how the Animal Kingdom Lodge pool is. It's a calm sort of environment. You know, it's not too in your face, so it's really going to get your Sleeping Beauty points. Has the zero entry. Actually, we sat in that zero entry and talked life, momhood, business, like everything you can imagine, which was really nice. What about the Tinkerbell factor? Do you think there's something extra special about it? Well, I it? think the fact that it has two slides and a splash pad and potentially plays fun music on the hour <laughs> is, is all kinds of special. <laughs> all right, we'll give it. <laughs> my only my only concern that I have at all 
is that gives it an A plus. And do I think Saratoga Springs Resort Pool is comparative to the other pools we've given an A plus? And we I know we have to be very straightforward in what we're doing. Like I feel like this is an A plus with an asterisk because the splash pad isn't anything compared to what you're gonna get at some of these other places. I'm I'm honestly willing to not give it its Tinkerbell points because it has a lot of features that other things have. And they didn't do it like in a really special way, as long as we're just driving home the point that I think this is kind of an underrated resort with a good pool. Yeah. Yeah. It was even a great pool, but I just don't know that it's a yeah destination. Okay. I think that's fair. And that gives it an A. I think that's really fair. Okay. Well, that's going to bring us to our very last Disney World pool. And it's Wilderness Lodge, Copper Creek Springs. Becky? I just stayed at Wilderness Lodge for the first time on my 40th birthday. And so I have a special place in my heart. I also, being from Utah, my summer vacations were not to Disney with my family. They were to Yellowstone. And so Wilderness Lodge speaks so well to just who I was growing up. And so I love so many things about this pool, but the things about this pool might not even be about the pool. Right across from the pool, you can watch Old Faithful, air quotes, Old Faithful go off on the hour, which is really, really unique. I think you are surrounded by this massive lodge that looks like old, like Yellowstone Lodge that you would go experience when you're going to see Old Faithful. They did such great things with the theming of this area. The water running off of the rocks into it feels cool. So many great things, but the pool itself kind of feels like a afterthought to all of the other things that are going on in that area. I have to agree. I, I mean, I've said I'm not outdoorsy, but I do love Wilderness Lodge, like with this rustic vibe and everything is just so gorgeous, but it, it does. It kind of feels like, look at all of this amazing immersive stuff and a pool. <laughs> yeah. It's like a water, a little watering hole in the middle of activity. It doesn't scream deluxe to me. Like the view is gorgeous and the surroundings are great. Just like you said, but the pool is so small. The slide is so small. Like it's like shockingly tiny. I feel like for a deluxe resort slide splash pad is huge. I put this in the top three for splash pads. Probably it's really big and way more exciting than the pool itself. But yeah, it's, this is a very like 50, 50 pool to me. Like, yes, it's Jack Jack approved. My kids loved it. Yes. It's one of the most serene pools you can possibly lay by. So it's absolutely sleeping beauty approved zero entry. Like no, not at the main pool. No, that Boulder, I think that Boulder Ridge pool might have a, have a zero entry, but the main pool does not. Yeah. Mm. And that like at such a small pool too, I don't know. I just, it, that would have been a nice touch to have. I think it's a nice touch at any pool. Um, And it, I think it's important to know which ones don't have it. It's not big at all. I think it's got to, has to be one of the smallest pools. It really has to be. It's just. It's tiny. And it's taking up such a, a mass amount of space, which is so weird. How can such a small pool take up such a big, beautiful piece of property? I don't know. It's yeah, just... I feel like when you're walking to it, like you're walking over that bridge and through a cave, like you're like walking under those big rocks and down over the beautiful bridge and the water running, like streaming into the pool. So gorgeous. And you're like, oh my gosh, I'm about to go somewhere so incredibly special. And then you get there and you're like, hmm, hmm, hmm. Yeah. Do you think it gets Tinkerbell though? Because of how beautiful it is? Having, they call it Fire Rock Geyser. It's fully intentional to be like Old Faithful. I I have to say yes, because right there, you can see that from anywhere in that area. And it is, people line up to see that every single hour. It's amazing. But I know that that could just be my nostalgic heart talking. No, I think this pool is special. I think this pool looks and vibes really differently than... I think it is a very special pool. I just think you have to like temper your expectations in terms of size and, and thrill and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that I feel good about that because it's going to give it a B. Yeah. And I think it deserves a B. I feel okay about that. Well, that wraps up our entire report card. This is so much fun. I cannot wait to share this with listeners because you're going to really have a breakdown. Like we've just given a breakdown. If you listen to both of these episodes and you need to know, like, is my pool going to have these specific features? This is what my kiddos want. You're going to, this is going to help narrow down so many people's vacations, I think. And of course, if you enjoy a pool more than we let on, or if we made a pool sound more appealing than it was, like, let us know. 
Find us on social media, Facebook and Instagram, especially at Smart Moms Plan Disney Podcast, or in our Patreon community. If you're not already subscribed, become a Diamond Mind subscriber. And let's continue the conversation because I like hearing things that I may have missed, or I like knowing if something is good that I think is bad. <laughs> I think that's fine. And I've had a whole evolution as a person on Animal Kingdom theme park. So, you know, I think these are all things like that. When you're staying at these resorts, it, a lot of people are just like, this is where I'm going to sleep. But I think for some families, the pool is like the main attraction. You're going there and you're swimming and it's the main event. And for any smart moms travel agents listening today, the Hidden Mickey is attraction. Because I do think a lot of people make their resort stays and Disney vacations surrounding the pool that they're going to be staying at. And it's important to know that not all Disney pools are created equally, but all Disney pools are created with good fun thought. So we're going to go lowest rating to highest rating here. Here's how it went on our grading scale. Coming in with a C minus at the very bottom from part one, we had all-star sports surfboard bay pool. Just above that with a C, all-star music calypso pool. And just above that with a C plus pop century hippy dippy pool. I'm a little surprised by that, to be honest. But I think it still feels fair. I am not too surprised because if I was going to stay value and it was based on the pool, I think the resort I would choose is the all-star, either the all-star movies resort with the Fantasia pool or Art of Animation. Those are the two. Yeah, we'll get to those grades. So just above that with a B minus. A deluxe resort, the contemporary, I stand by it. It gets a B minus, which is not even a bad grade. I'm sorry. I'm just laughing like out of pain, honestly, that it's the contemporary and it's the fourth lowest resort for a pool. Oh, it just hurts a little but bit. I think we kind of took into account that these resorts are supposed to be top of the top and they're not offering that with yeah. pool because listen to some of our other Bs. We have getting a B, the Wilderness Lodge Copper Creek Springs Pool. Port Orleans Riverside Pool, the Grand Floridian Resort and Villas Beach Pool, the Fort Wilderness Campgrounds Meadow Recreation Area Pool, and the Boardwalk Inn and Villas Luna Park Pool. A B, oh, I'm sorry, and the All-Star Movies Fantasia Pool. Uh, those are all getting solid Bs. And a B is not a bad grade. Like, if you bring home a B on your report card, you're still feeling pretty good about that. But that, you know. They're bees and there are reasons they're missing certain elements that don't give them that top tier grade. I think what's interesting here in the B tier too was like literally every resort level is in this B tier, whether you're value, moderate or deluxe, it's all there. Yeah, it's interesting. There is a, yeah, you have every, and actually that's true for almost all these grades. Mm -hmm. We're going to move into A. These resort pools got an A rating. First up, the Coronado Springs main pool there. We loved that one. That's from part one. Old Key West Resort main pool. Port Orleans French Quarter pool. The Riviera Riviera pool. And the Saratoga Springs Resort and Villas pool. All solid A's. Love it. Those are all really great choices. But if you want to plan your Disney vacation solely around the resort pool, you're going to want to hit one of these A-plus pools. We have the Animal Kingdom Lodge pools. There's the main pool at Kidani Village and the main pool at Jumbo House. Both are unbelievable. A plus. Art of Animation, the big blue pool. But we also, on the previous episode, discussed the Little Mermaid pool and the Cars pool that you can find there at Art of Animation. A plus. The Yacht and Beach Club, Storm Along Bay. Caribbean Beach, uh, Fuentes de Mauro pool. Amazing. And of course, the Polynesian Lava Pool. I really think we nailed it. Those are the top pools. Those are all A pluses. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. And I, I like that in the conversation we also have is when we say, often we'll say that the Beach Club and the Yacht Club are arguably the best pool on property. I think we're making a good argument that it's not a giveaway that Storm Along Bay is the only amazing pool you could be planning with. I really love that you pointed that out because I, I really feel like so many pools across Disney are really solid, but all of these like top five, they got A pluses. I feel, I feel really great about all yeah, of them. Yeah. And I feel really yeah. great that our top tier has representation once again from every tier level Disney resort. Absolutely. Do I still hold true that maybe Storm Along Bay, like, 
could still arguably be called the best? Sure. But do some other pools still really hold that same ranking? Absolutely. This was such a fun conversation. I want to go swimming in these pools right now. <laughs> it's almost summer. <laughs> Take me away. Yeah. It's almost summer. It's time to plan that Disney trip if you haven't already. And Disney pools are swimmable year round. They are heated. They are swimmable in all months. My kids will swim in its ice cubes. We just opened our pool here at home. And it's so pretty cold out and the water is definitely really cold. And they were swimming all weekend. It was amazing. Allie, is it too late to start planning your summer 2024 vacation? Uh, no, it's never too late to plan a vacation. I helped a family last week plan a vacation for next week. You you can always plan a vacation. Like, yes, people stress about how important the pre-planning process is. And for payment and dining reservations and things like that, sure, that's all very important. But if you want to go to Disney World, it's never too late. Get your summer vacation and go lay by the pool. Do what my family did. Go to stay at a resort and lay by the pool and focus that instead of parks and put your money there for your summer vacation. I also think that having the ability to potentially have some double dipping on Disney discounts in the summer months with some remarkable prices on tickets that you will never get outside of those summer months. Disney in the summer has so much magic. And while everyone's on vacation, you'd be surprised how slow some of those days in the summer months can really be. And adding a pool into that mix, it it can truly just be the most magical summer vacation ever. Yeah, I love that you were just talking about double dipping on the savings because there's really not any other time of year that you're able to do that with Disney with double dipping on those promotions. And you can save a lot of money by being able to do that. Yesterday, I was quoting a family for the Poly, and I was able to save them over $1,900. We're talking like $2,000-ish. Like, that's a huge savings. <laughs> yeah, it's unbelievable. And I will say, too, like, if you are thinking, oh, I can't go to Disney in the summer because the parks are just going to be too hot. If you want to consider a resort stay to focus mostly on the pools like we just discussed, you can also add the dining plan to that without tickets. Like your travel agent can put the dining plan together with you for your with your resort and you can use that and sort of have what feels like an all-inclusive experience, you know, with so much food prepaid to use at different resorts and Disney Springs. So that is not an idea to be slept on. Reach out to your Smart Moms agent if you don't already have one reach out to us with our link in our bio so that a podcast co-host can help you get a really, really amazing resort stay summer vacation. Or if you want to throw parks in there too. I mean, it's never too hot for us to go to the park. So I can relate. Well, that was fun. And that's going to do it for us this time on the Smart Moms Plan Disney Podcast. I feel like we left y'all with some great information and you have a lot more to work with as you're choosing the perfect Disney resort for your family. And until next time, we'll see you real soon.